Hello and welcome to the Next Level Podcast. I'm Tim Miller here with my best buddies, Jonathan Variant Last and Sarah Longwell. <laughs> um, let me tell you uh, why I'm in the host chair today. Two reasons. Um, we'll start first with the mea culpa. You might notice this podcast is on Thursday. It's because I can't schedule my life by myself. I'm, uh, I need a I need a scheduler. I need a Priya, but I don't. You know, I can't afford that. So Priya is my scheduler. Yeah, just so in case anybody <laughs> thought Priya is not like the universal name for name someone who schedules things, so like Siri. Yeah. 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 If, if any right. of you have like a 17-year-old who doesn't want to get paid and wants to be in my inbox, maybe let me know. But um, that's why we're doing this on Thursday. My bad. My apologies. Um, I was flying across the country. I was at Duke on Tuesday um, where I spoke to a class with some Next Level fans, including a guy who told me that his boyfriend is sick of the sound of my voice. So <laughs> I have that effect Things on Things that people. also get said in my house. <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> and, uh, and then I flew across the country, and today I'm in Palm Springs where I'll be on a panel with Carl Rove. So we can, we can get, maybe we can get to that later. Um, but, uh, and the other reason I'm in the host here is because, Jonathan, which, which variant do you have right now? You're a little sick. Your skin I, I don't doesn't know. look all, good. All of them. All yeah. of them. I, somehow I, I flew up all over the West Coast and was in rooms with hundreds of people and didn't get COVID, but I came home and I got whacked with COVID again. Well, Can I just say really quickly, conspiracy. we've had this conversation. You tried to tell me I had to wear a mask and I was like, no, you know where I'm going to get sick? I'm going to get sick in my house from my kids. Not on, not on, yeah, ding, ding, that's ding. Right. That's right. Okay. Well, there you go. I'm sorry um, you're sick, buddy. Um, Thank you. Yeah, you know. Um, you're gonna Look at me better. strapping it on. Wait, not like you. Not like the episode where you strapped it on, Sarah, to the point where you had to turn off your camera mute and run off screen to go throw up, which was yeah, one and, of the great Yeah, and it was just like Tim in my headphones. I could just like hear Tim. Tim luckily, Tim talked long enough that <laughs> I had the whole time. I could, I could, yeah, <laughs> and like get back in my chair, turn my camera back on before he was done talking. Okay, well, uh, was because, I was, because I was in the host chair today, I had a big, uh, you know, I put a lot, a lot of effort when I'm going to host. I had a big show map for you guys. But we had to blow it up this morning. Show map is totally blown up because our great leader, the Mount Rushmore of Sarah Longwell, the man with a mural, she has a mural in her home to him. Um, <laughs> and man, well, let's just, let's just go to the audio tape. Sebastian, let's hear what Larry Hogan had to say this morning. Will you support whoever the nominee of the Republican Party is in 2024? I, I imagine that will be the case. I'm, I'm anxious to find out who the nominee is going to be. Well, that I'm assuming uh, that no one knows, but it might be Donald Trump. So you're saying if it's Donald Trump, you'll be willing to support him? Yeah, as I've said, uh, you, I don't think it is going to be Donald Trump. But uh, you know, we'll, we'll cross that bridge or jump off that bridge when we come to it. Now, wait a minute. That was a little Lamar Jackson. Earlier, you said you'd support the nominee, and then you said we'd cross the bridge. I'm not letting go of the leg. I'm like Miles Garrett. If Trump is the nominee, does Larry Hogan support him? Yeah, I just don't think he's going to be the nominee, but I'll support the nominee. Hugh is a dogged interviewer, that Hugh Hewitt, when he's got a cuck on the show. Yeah, selectively. Um, yeah. Selectively dogged. <laughs> um, let's, uh, let's just really quick for a quick refresher uh, before we get into that. Uh, we also have a clip. What, what was Larry Hogan saying about Donald Trump maybe about a year ago? Does President Trump have blood on his hands? There's uh, no question in my mind that he was uh, he was responsible for inciting this uh, this riotous mob. Uh, this was an insurrection, and uh, you know they stormed the Capitol and threatened to kill the vice president and put the lives uh, of, of of people in danger. And and uh, he had a huge part, uh, a huge role to play in that. Hmm. JVL, do you have the shirt? <laughs> do you have the shirt on you? I, you know, I don't. I don't have it right now in my in my confinement. He has issued a a clarification. Uh, <laughs> reads thusly: To be clear, my position on Trump hasn't changed. Trump won't commit to supporting the Republican nominee, and I won't c commit to supporting him. As I've repeatedly said, I fully expect to support the Republican nominee, who I don't believe will be Trump. Here's the thing: that that clip that you played of Hogan after January sixth is how he yours usually talks about Trump. When I heard the Hugh Hewitt thing this morning, like. My day dissolved because I was like, this cannot be, this cannot be true. He can't believe this. He's been very clear uh, that he would not support Trump. He says it on TV all the time. He holds Trump responsible for January 6th, et cetera. In the Republican Party, there, he is the best you're going to do, with the exception of Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger. Right? Like he's the third best of all the Republicans that exist. So seeing this this morning, that it sounded like he was like saying, I'll support Trump if he's the nominee. Uh, 
I was, and then when I, I started like, uh, freaking out about it and, and I said some things on Twitter, uh, because it came in the wake of literally right before I went to bed last night. I had tweeted, uh, I, he had, there had been news that he was going to, um, say that he was going to run in 2024 or that he was thinking about it. He was considering running in 2024. And I had like, you know, earnestly, but sort of jokingly tweeted that like my account was going to become a Larry Hogan 2024 Stan account going forward. Uh, and like garbage people like Red Steez, like quote tweeted that. <laughs> and so I had all these people in my mentions who were saying like, LOL, like, you know, obviously he doesn't have a chance. He doesn't have a chance. As though I haven't listened to voters over the last four years and I'm not acutely aware that they are not interested in the pragmatic uh, sort of centrist governor from Maryland that what they want is a like culture warrior sociopath. Like I understand uh, how limited his lane is, which is part of the reason that I was perplexed by this, because if you are Larry Hogan or let's say you're Liz Cheney, the only way you run, the only way you run is by trying to capture a gentleman's 10% in the same lane. I don't know. When I listened to that clip, um, I had seen it. I had seen it um, written out. And the part where he says, yeah, looked like him saying yes to me when it was written. When you hear it, it's he's using it as like a bridge, a language bridge, as he kind of obfuscates, obfuscates. Uh, but the the clarification doesn't say he won't support Trump. And it actually like took me a minute to sort of realize that he's not actually saying he definitely won't support Trump. He's saying he won't commit. He's not saying that he's committing. Well, because Trump hasn't Trump. committed to supporting the nominee. If if Trump were to con- commit to supporting the nominee and then Larry then Trump were to somehow miraculously become the nominee, then he might have to or he might have to write in uh Ben Sass, right? I mean, you, you never know. You never know what he's what he will have to do. It's gonna be great when DeSantis but I mean, the good news is DeSantis will bail all of these guys out. Right? Yeah. So they, they're not gonna wind up having to I, to confront this. Yeah, but you're missing so you're missing the reason. That's not the the reason that I liked the idea of Larry Hogan running is not because I think Larry Hogan has a chance of winning. It's because in my optimistic worldview, somebody who's going to be in the race, who is going to do something other than sort of suck up to Donald Trump is, an, is important to have. That, that like no. it can have a salutary effect on the he overall won't suck party. Up to him. He'll just like do his own thing, right? I mean, he'll, you know, he'll do like I'm a centrist problem solver. He just won't the say Kasich bad thing. things about Trump. He'll say that's the past. I don't want to talk about that anymore. Yeah, right. but that's but that's worse now. So here's the thing. So there, I, I actually I wrote a whole piece that I scuttled before that I had to scuttle because before, did you even look at it, JVL? Uh, I wrote a whole piece for you this morning. Let's read. From and it. it was about how. No, no, it's it, <laughs> he, he did. Look, he clarified and walked it back. I think he did not walk it back nearly far enough. He's not saying the right thing. We can unpack that a little bit more. But he's not saying what we thought originally he was saying, which is that, yes, if Trump's the nominee, I'll support him. Right. That's not what he's saying. Right. He's just refusing to say that he won't support. Him. That's right. The difference is you can't live in the same moral universe, right, of saying that Donald Trump is responsible for January 6th, that he tried to subvert the election. Like, if you're clear eyed about that, as Hogan has been, you can't say, uh, and I would support him in any universe. Right. You have to be unequivocal about that. And so his... When he, when he, I was glad he walked, cause like saying he would support him to me, I was like, okay. So the piece that I wrote was like, it's over. Cause it's not just him. It's Sununu too. And they both are saying the same thing. Sununu actually is not let's clarifying. Go. He is saying. He's, yeah, let's go to oh, the yeah, Sununu clip really quick. Clip. Let's play the Sununu clip. If Trump's the Republican nominee, do you support him? If he's the nominee? Yeah. Yeah. I would, f- I fully plan on supporting the Republican nominee. He's not going to be the nominee though. I mean, that is a real hypothetical. It's well, not isn't that, happen. isn't that, I mean, given your, critiques of him over the past isn't that walk walk me through how you get there if you think that you know if, if you've been as critical as he's been if you've let's look at the joked and sort of half joked that that he's crazy well look at the alternative okay so sununu is being very clear he's saying the thing that i thought larry hogan was originally saying trump is trump coup doer preferable to biden so i this morning went from somebody who was in my optimism thinking 
you could get people like Sununu, like Hogan, who are like better case scenarios, more pro-democracy, have been more clear-eyed, uh, to both of them saying that they would support Trump. Now, if he's the nominee, which I was like, okay, that's disqualifying. Like that's the that's the end of it. There's no, and sometimes it is about, sometimes I do feel like I wrote that piece, um, goodbye to the good Republicans. I didn't include Hogan in that piece, but I did include Sununu. And so like, I know that. <laughs> like Sununu went ahead with Balduck after it. Like, yeah. I, I know that. And I, I wrestle genuinely with this tension between wanting they're needing to be a better alternative. Like they're genuinely needing to be somebody who is not lost to the MAGA mania. And then, and so like wanting to pull for these guys who I know are not sucked in by it and then just watching them fall short uh, time and time again is like, it's disappointing. I wanted to, I do want to defend, or I'm like glad Hogan walked it back. It's like his attempt, he understands that it was wrong. He understands he can't say that he would support him, but he's not going far enough. Uh, yeah. And it's just because they don't know how to do it. They don't know how to exist in a Republican primary or think about how they would exist in a Republican primary and like, just be clear. Yeah, just a few items on this one uh, in, in where we're in the same boat. So, um, you know, uh, uh, you're not alone here. I, I told Maureen Dowd's sister last night that I liked Chris Sununu at, the, at this ridiculous conference that I'm at. And so I don't really know why I said it. It came out of my mouth because it's like, oh, you know, he's better than the others. I said, you know, I was just trying to make a, you know, have some kind of commonality with uh, with Maureen Dowd's Republican sister. And uh, there we go. And then I came home to this clip. I was like, boy, that was that, that lasted really that lasted really long. Uh, here's the big problem is that um you know we you, we get into this all this stuff you get navel gazy you get you get into pundit brain you get strategizing about what you can say and what you think you can say to win a republican primary like the guy did a coup a de a deadly coup I, larry hogan said with his own voice that he had blood on his hands he agreed with the notion that donald trump was responsible for people's deaths when he when he attempted a coup like, like this is madness. Like what, what uh, you know, it's, it's like, it's like your French village podcast. It's like one of these tests of like, how, like what, how far do we need to go for people to just be like, no, never Trump. It would never Trump in 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 28, Don Jr., Barron. Never. <laughs> None of them. Okay. Like forever and ever. And and to me that also extends to people. I this is now a personal Tim thing. I am never anyone that would be for him. So that eliminates the entire party, right? Which is the frustrating part of this, right? To your to your saying, like you want there to be somebody that you could be for. It's actually worse for somebody like Sununu to say that if Trump's the nominee, they'd support him. Then, like it's worse when the normal people say that it's okay. They build a permission structure. For other normal people who think like, well, Sununu is pretty good. Sununu is a normal guy. Like it's worse. Like it's actually could have like a worse effect if the most sane, most normal people are saying that there are circumstances under which that they can endorse Donald Trump. Yes. Yeah. They're sending a bad signal. They're sending a signal that it could be okay. And just really quick, one first thing that I want to get to JVL, just one sentence. If Chris Sununu was a banker, not a governor. If Chris Sununu was a banker in Nashua and had all of his existing views and was not doing any political strategizing, Chris Sununu would have voted for Joe Biden, right? Like Chris Sununu fits the right. exact mold of every person that swung to Joe Biden in 2020. And so like he's fucking li like it's all a farce. It's all a total farce. Anyway, JVL, how, how's your sickness overlapped with with those with those video clips? I can can we go to fantasy island politics for a minute please because the the thing that got me about the sununu clip was his explanation which was well look at the alternative and if if you know these these pragmatic these pragmatic republican governors like to talk about how like you know it's really it's the real policies and all that if you st if you just like set up one of those you know Montessori pre K scales like the wooden scales where the kids are learning how what you know what fits yeah. on which and how they counterbalance, and you just started like putting policies on either side, I think that both Hogan and 
and Sununu are much, much closer to Biden than they are to like DeSantis or Trump in terms of their political. Like the truth is, if if you were to just take them and erase the the letter next to their their names and turn it into a D, they fit okay with with sort of where the the current Democratic Party is. You know, not with the activist class, but uh, you know, like could could. Chris Sununu win a statewide office in New Hampshire running as a Democrat? Probably. Could Larry Hogan win statewide running as a Democrat in Maryland? I think totally. he probably could. Yeah, they probably both have so, the primary at this point. But like, what, but a better example right, they is would. what about John but, Bell Edwards? Like, what is the difference? Like, John Bell Edwards is probably more, more conservative on social issues than Larry but, Hogan, right? Like, put, the, put either of those guys in a red state, right? And they would yeah. easily be a Democratic governor. And this is what I don't understand. You know, when, when they start talking, well, you know, just look at the other, the alternative is you're on the other side already. I don't understand. Like, it's all this insane, like, I'm sorry, I joined the sharks. And even though the sharks want to murder me, I can't go over and hang out with the jets anymore. And I don't, I don't understand it. I don't under, like, these guys are not currently in politics. They're not asking for votes. Maybe they have delusions about futures involved, but why? I don't know. Believe me, Larry Hogan's future in Democratic politics is at least as bright as his future in Republican politics. And why these people can't can't see that and then have to go to like the weird kabuki aspect of pretending that the the, the Democrats are so terrible that no matter who the best Democrat is, they could not possibly support the best Democrat against the worst Republican because the you know just because of the policies, because they're there for the serious policies. That's what I don't understand. And that's the part that drives me crazy because the truth is if they're there for the policies and not for just the, you know, the jersey that they're wearing and, you know, sorry, I got the ink in prison. I can't I can't override the tattoo. Then they they would actually be pretty okay with this form of the Republican Party. And maybe they would maybe they could be maybe they would vastly prefer uh Nikki Haley as a nominee, right? And and yeah. they could say, I- "Look, Joe Biden's fine, but I would prefer Nikki Haley to Joe Biden. Great. I prefer Mike DeWine to Joe Biden. Great. Like all those things are understandable. But to pretend that like the MAGA wing is somehow more more aligned with them as a pragmatic matter of getting things done for the American people is insane. And the fact that they will, will pretend that that's the case just tells me they're not serious people. But don't you – I mean I guess – so here's the thing that I struggle with. I struggle between the analysis piece, which – like, of course, he should just be never Trump. And like the pragmatic part of me that thinks, how do you get yourself out of where where the Republican Party is? Like if the Republican Party, as it currently stands, is an existential threat to democracy, <laughs> to sanity, whatever. And you want to nudge it in, in positive directions. Like the people who hate us think that like that's what they're doing with DeSantis. They are absolutely not doing that with DeSantis. Uh, so like, if there's no, if there's not somebody like Larry Hogan, I don't know, like, I, I want somebody who is not this MAGA version to like root for, to hold up as an alternative. Um, and maybe there's just no path for that anymore. No, yeah, but there's a path to do it, right? You can do it. You just have to be honest when you're, when you're asked yeah. questions like this, you have to be honest and say like, look, I'd support Mike Pompeo. I'd support Nikki Haley. I'd support Mike DeWine. You know, you could list all the Republicans you support, but they're, you know, it's possible that there may be people who I who who I won't support. If George Santos were to win the the Republican nomination, I would not support him. And in the same way, I wouldn't support Donald Trump. And uh, you know, and you just have to let the chips fall with they, where they may, instead of engaging in this weird fantasy stuff where you're pretending that reality is different than it is. And right? Because that's the thing. You can't. You can't change things by living in a fantasy world, right? right. You can't change things by by making pretend. And and here's yeah, the real, real world talk. of the party. There is a way to nudge the party back to something good. It's just not what Larry Hogan wants. It's not what we want. Like that party is gone. Uh, it was by the way, it was a unique party in the world. Like there aren't a ton of classically liberal major parties anywhere in the world like it's a uniquely american thing and um and and like the party is gone the way to 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 nudge the party in a good direction would have been to have have the jd vance that wrote the book run for senate in ohio on populist culture platform 
and say Donald Trump is a liar and he's lying to you and he's and the, and the election wasn't stolen and the vaccines work. But otherwise, I'm with you on all this other shit. And that isn't going to be a party I like or Larry Hogan is going to like. Larry Hogan has a much better chance right. nudging the Democratic Party to his side like and working with Abigail. Sp- like, you know what I mean? Like all of that, like that is the real world that we're in. And and the, the world that they are in is 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 like not like it's, it makes me crazy. It's like. What what there is no nudging, the nudge is over. I mean, you could maybe in twenty five years or something. You know, I you know the Democrats like nominate an actual socialist and a democratic socialist, and then there needs to be a capitalist party. Uh, you know what I mean? Like I I don't know, but there's no nut. What are we nudging it to? What's the plan? What's the plan? Why? What's how? What are Hugh Hewitt's listeners? Like you go on Hugh Hewitt's show and you think you're going to win them over? They've spent the last eight years being sold Donald Trump propaganda. Like, what do you think the listeners want? I understand that. I, I guess I thought, and I still think, that if somebody took a principled stand and they were like, no, Donald Trump did a did a coup. We cannot uh, win with somebody like this. This this person, like he just said exactly what you said. This person's been lying to you. Um, I, I do think that there is not a, <laughs> there's not a big lane for it, but there's like a meaningful lane. Like now he's in this sour spot, right? Like, Hogan is now went from somebody who could have occupied that lane. It's like similar to a Liz Cheney lane, uh, where I think if somebody occupied that lane well and was pushing back, like, again, salu- broad salutary effect on politics in the party, potentially. Like it just it has an opportunity for some good, which is, I think, what I constantly strive towards. Uh, but instead, he's in that bad place where now he doesn't have a principled anti-Trump position. Right. He's not he's not a principled anti-Trump voice, uh, nor is he doing the thing that the rest of them are doing with endorsing Trump. So, like, there's no constituency for that. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's a good exactly transition right. into your he's poll. In no Sarah. Land. Yeah, let's 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 transition and talk a little bit more about your poll, um, which tells you what the lane is, um, because uh, here we go. I'm pulling it up here. Um, Cheney, fave, unfave, 1659. So there it is, 16 for Liz Cheney, um, yeah. which isn't nothing. But what do you think Cheney's favorability would be in a Democratic primary? Probably like 40. higher. Yeah, definitely higher. And so, same with Larry Hogan. Yeah. So I, that's like that's the other thing. That's what I'm yeah. talking about. But anyway, what um, uh, more, on, more on the poll. I, the interesting thing about the poll for me is, and here's, here's a chance to put on your Sarah's Maybe Right t-shirt. I... I I was a little, I, I teased you a little bit. It's not what the t-shirt says. Um, uh, I teased you a little bit in LA over Nikki Haley. We have a Nikki Haley announcement coming. Um, you, you've discussed, and if people yeah. haven't seen the poll, it's on the it's on the website. The most interesting finding in the poll it was focused on was 28% of, of the Trump supporters said they would follow him into to the independent bid. JVL wrote about that in the triad. But but there were some sub things that were interesting. I, I think are worth talking about. Nikki Haley's, Nikki Haley's favorite and favorite was pretty good. She isn't in Liz Cheney territory. Um, I don't have it right in front of me. I'll pull it up, but I mean, right. it was closer to Trump um, uh, than than that. Uh, here it is. Um, Haley. It was like in the forty-seven, like eleven, or seventies. No, forty-seven, eleven. Oh, forty-seven, so, eleven. Yeah. So the oh, favor okay. is 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 not that high, but the unfavor is really low. Wait, right? is that the overall favorable, or is that just the favorable with? That's, oh, wait, you're right. You're right. You're right. That like was just Trump. with Trump. That was yeah, just yeah, with yeah. Trump. Okay, you're that's right. That's right. Sorry. With with people. That's who just like with Trump. people who 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 value Trump over the party. Yeah. Um, 47 Haley, 11. You're right. She was hot. She was up in the, up in the seventies with the whole party. Um, that, you know, I was teasing her saying that, uh, on the stage saying that she was going to get her, get her ass beat. What do you think? Do you have, did that poll change your view on the, on the DeSantis Trump binary at all? Or is that, is that absurd? I mean, I, I, my view hasn't really changed, but Uh, but I was interested in that number. No, my view, my view hasn't changed either. I just, I think that, um, I think that her chances are, not great to become the Republican nominee. I do think her chances are better than Mike Pence, Mike Pompeo, uh, any of the Mike P's. Um, like, and there's a whole group of candidates that people would talk about as somewhat top tier or middle tier, maybe, uh, that I think she could outperform. And part of it is that in the focus groups, I think I've talked about this before, sh- she gets brought up uh, both among swing voters and like the normie ish side of the Trump voters. And some of it, sometimes I'm like, do you just, can you, do you like know, you know, who, like she has good name ID. Um, I think 
you can stand out from all the white dudes sometimes if you're a woman, if you're a woman, but they, they do know who she is in a way that they don't know who Glenn Youngkin is. They don't know who Larry Hogan is. They don't know who Kristen Nunu is. They don't know who Mike Pompeo is. I mean, I've heard Mike Pompeo come up like once or twice, but like Nikki Haley comes up as often, if not more often than somebody like Mike Pence. In fact, she definitely comes yeah, up more Pence, often than Pence, Pence with that same group of Trump first voters, 46, 45. 35 unfair yeah. like half of them already hate right. him um and you know don't right. be gallows um mike what do you think about nikki haley versus mike piazza i think mike piazza went naga <laughs> jvl did he she doesn't know who that is did you I know, don't know who that is um he was base, a new york Mets player. catcher that there was rumors that he was gay um not gay turns out and uh you know kind of a little stink um so okay uh, what i mean let's just let's just play it out Let's just play out Nikki for me, because I, I still am very I, I couldn't be lower on on the possibility. But but if she starts from this base of people that she likes, she's she's running. You know, you'll get the National Review, you get the DeSantis fanzine people that'll say she shouldn't be in. She's just helping Trump, blah, blah, blah. What, what's what's your take? What like what's what would be a path, what would a path for her look like? Ron DeSantis not running and Trump dying. Is there is there another path besides Ron DeSantis not running and Trump dying for Nikki Haley? No, I guess it's that Ron DeSantis and Trump split the hardcore MAGA vote and that they're, she kind of emer- and that like it's in a three way uh, that she is able to kind of emerge as the most, at like a normal, a more normie fusion, fusion candidate. I don't think that'll happen, but like, right. I guess that's yeah, my that, only yeah. plausible scenario. Because um, yeah. here's the thing about Nikki Haley, you know, I, 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 first of all, I just, I do want to give her points for getting in first. Uh, I think that there is a bunch of cowards out there, uh, waiting for other people to get in. Um, you know, Mike Pompeo's not doing anything right now. Mike Pence isn't doing anything right now. Uh, he's, he's working on blurbs for the soft cover version of his book. <laughs> and so like, you know, the, somebody's gotta be, somebody's gotta go in first and, and they're going to like take the, you know, early hits from Trump. And I'm glad, I think that's. She anyway. has not taken the early hits from Trump. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He hasn't isn't said that anything. interesting? Yeah, it is. What is your take on that, JVL? Uh, I think Trump realizes that he needs a bigger field, right? And uh, so the more, the more, the better. And uh, you know, I mean, I know there are theories, compromat theories on uh, on that, but I don't think that that's what's going on. I think that he understands that he's going to need a big field. And uh, who has, has compromise on Sarah, who? Sarah's, Sarah's not on Blue and on Twitter like you, JVL. I know you pretend not to be on Twitter with the I, resistance. I, I, resistance. Uh, uh, there, there were some. In, there were some resistance some world. Little, yeah, there was in the resistance world. There's a conspiracy that bubbled up based on I don't even know what that that they had. A, they had a little totally trist. unfounded. That is totally unfounded. Oh, it was. You know what? I know what it was in. It was in that Wolf book. Uh, oh, that's right. It, yeah, it was okay. the Michael Wolf book. That's it right. was. I remember when that happened. Uh, because I was outraged at the yeah. on Nikki's behalf. That was back when I was really I was still standing Nikki hard. Yeah, she. Uh, I'll, I'll say this about Nikki Haley: she is a much better retail politician than uh, anybody else who is likely to be in the Republican field. Uh, the problem is she really doesn't know who she is. I mean, and this is. You know, just her vacillation over the Trump stuff, the whole, you know, her whole Trump saga it is just proof of of somebody who doesn't understand why, what they think or why they think it or why they're running for something. Uh, and that's I, I just think that that almost never flies in presidential politics, even taking like the MAGA and Rhino Cuck stuff out of it. Yeah. Um, you can be a really gifted retail politician and a really good political talent. And if you don't understand what it is you stand for and, and why you're running for something other than it's the next brass ring for you to get, primary voters don't tend to like that. Here's, I think, a more... Um, I think that's right. I, I agree. I also think that's right. But I think that there's a more practical reason um, that, that she has no, no viability. And that is... Um, What's been going on in the conservative media world? Um, JV, you did a great tryout about how, how DeSantis is buying up the grifters. John Chait had a good piece that, that linked to, uh, to the, your poll, Sarah, uh, in, in New York Magazine about this. It's pretty astonishing. And I think kind of underappreciated. Chait's like the one ringing the bell about this. How like DeSantis has a full lock 
on conservative media, everything from the maybe Trumpers at the National Review all the way over to like anti-vax freaks, you know, and grifters like Bill Mitchell. And, 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 you know, they, they have all those folks are already planting their flag, you know? And so like, where is the oxygen going to come from for somebody like Nikki Haley? You know what I mean? Like, even if, so like, you know, an imaginary world where DeSantis collapses or doesn't run or whatever, that world is all going to splinter again. You know, a lot of them go back to Trump, maybe some other people. There's not, Nikki couldn't fill, right. it's not like, it's not like DeSantis goes away and Nikki fills that, right? It would have to be someone else from the MAGA kind of multiverse you know and, and 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 i just think that i don't know it'll be interesting in your focus group sarah to like kind of hear like what kind of information the people's information diets and i just think it's going to be very very pro desantis so it's pro really pro desantis right now here's the one thing so nikki haley's announcement and then because i tweeted about it um i got i was talking to reporters most of yesterday and everybody's doing this like gaming out the field exactly what we're doing and i, I there is um Look, I, I, I want to game out the field in terms of I want to make sure that Donald Trump does not win the Republican nomination, that there is no way for him to claw back in. And I wanted to understand the size of his plurality. What is the size of the always Trumpers? But gaming out the primary is really hard because we're all missing one crucial piece of information, uh, which is the political talent of all the people involved. Uh, now, we have hints about some of them because we've seen them. They might not be on the national stage, but they're on the local stage. But I haven't even seen Trump himself really like with it, with, you know, in his full force. I haven't seen Trump toe to toe with anybody. I haven't, you know, nobody's seen DeSantis toe to toe with anybody. Last time I saw DeSantis toe to toe was with Charlie Crist. And he, you know, is given that like awkward answer when Crist accuses him of running for president. And he just stands there awkwardly and like with a weird smile. I was like, is this guy politically talented? I don't know. Is Nikki Haley? To JVL's point, I agree completely. She doesn't know who she is. Um, and like, but does she come out like tan rested and ready? And she's got a, she's got a platform. Uh, she's got something to say. I heard a little preview, uh, when she was talking, I think, cause people are, you know, they know that she's going to do this announcement and she's talking about like generational change. And I was like, okay, that is not unique to you, Nikki Haley. That's not like your, <laughs> they, everybody can claim generational change from these the like, guys are old, from, from Trump. Yeah, like that's not a pitch for you. And and also I thought when I thought Tim was going to go on Nikki Haley is like nothing has changed more in the Republican Party than the fact than the way it approaches foreign policy over the last 10 years. And if you're Nikki Haley and you're running in 2012, one of the big things you've got going for you is this. And let's say you'd been, uh, you know, you'd run the U.N., uh, or you'd been our, our U.N. person like you'd have that foreign policy experience. Those would be part of your chops. Now you're just a now you're just a neocon, uh, and yeah, that's no, not going to be anywhere. a huge weakness, right? I mean, the Ukraine thing would be a, a huge weakness for her in the primary because that's she's right. going to be nominally pro Ukraine because she's a serious person. Think about, think about it this way, right? What was her signature issue as governor? She took down the Confederate flags. That's right, right? And uh, today, in the Republican primary field, that's a non-starter with Republican voters. That will get you killed by Republicans. Confederate they flags no over, the cap- over the national capital. In the meantime, um, yeah. Um, okay. Do we have? Do you have any other poll but thoughts? Jim, hold okay, on. Wait, can I just ask you something? Yeah, please. No, but just this idea that if 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 Ron DeSantis did crater, um, let's say he he has no political talent actually, yeah. and the whole thing falls apart pretty yeah. quickly. Scott Walker situation. Yeah, but like you think you don't think Nikki Haley is the next stop? No, no. For, for National form- Review Daily Wire. Maybe National Review, right? This is what I'm saying. I think you end up fracturing. The, the Like, Ron DeSantis' strength right now is based on his public, you know, his his media strength, right? Like, that's what it's all about. I mean, it's all right. hype over, you know, him yelling at these reporters and him playing these games, you know, right. on, on culture war issues and the gas stoves he and blah, blah, blah. beat right? the college board. Yeah. Okay, right. He the, beat exactly. the college board. And so who right. likes all that? Well, everybody, right? Like, that is the thing that unites the party right now. Like the, being good at trolling the libs, mm-hmm. right? And so, and, and we don't know. Right. He doesn't have. We don't actually know 
what his opinions are on like Ukraine and some of these other controversial issues. So that may end up being something that that ends up getting him crossways with some of these some of these media outlets. But my point is, if DeSantis goes the way of Scott Walker and just tanks and goes back to Tallahassee to eat his ham sandwiches. And like what you would have is Nikki would start to get support from the National Review crowd and some others, you know, your guy Benson's and like people like that. But then tr- then many of the MAGA people that are that are, you know, right now going back and forth with DeSantis and Trump and, and being very pro DeSantis, like the types of people with that turning you point USA festival that I went to, all those folks would just go back to Trump. Right. And then maybe somebody else emerges that can you can kind of pick up your, you know, Daily Wire, that Ben Shapiro, you know, that's kind of broad center of the MAGA part of the party. Um, I, I, I don't know who, I don't think that's any of the people we've named, though. Um, and I think that probably what Before, would end up happening if DeSantis tanks is Trump ends up kind of with 60 and then there's like this this div- divided other thing. I, I, I don't, and I just don't think that Nikki has because of her policies, the fact she's a woman, I, I, all across the board, I just don't think she can do, she can unite people like DeSantis has. Yeah, I, I genuinely think that if it's neither DeSantis nor Trump, then the most likely nominee is somebody who is not even in the conversation, and it is most likely to be somebody who is not a political figure, but is a culture war figure. Yeah. I mean, a, I think that Carrie Lake... Chris Rufo is going to be president? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carrie Lake, I think, would be no, a, do a better Carrie job Lake. of uniting the conservative media yeah. than, than Nikki, right? So she wouldn't get... So DeSantis yeah. is uniting everybody, right? So Carrie would lose the National Reviews and the Wall Street Journal ad board and Guy Benson, right? Like the handful of that crowd. But, I, you know, I think that that all the people at the Turning You Up Point USA Festival, Charlie Kirk and Tucker and Laura Ingram, and they, they all come around on it, right? Um, so... I think they would. Just, they would if she'd won that governor's race. Right. Right. Yeah. Think sure. about that. But what I mean, is I that margin? That margin is seventeen thousand votes. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And if those seventeen thousand votes go the other way, I think that all of the DeSantis stuff is tempered by. Well, I don't know. We I agree with that. Governor Lake, maybe. I mean, if I don't want to go for for Trump, look at what she's done over yeah. there, right? And she's now in the state house, owning libs on her own every day, yeah. right? I, uh, but the fact that she lost is part of what has confused this dynamic. Like, I think this yes. is part of the problem, right? Is Or not problem. It's good that all of those people lost. But it's given me this sense of of possibility. I think, I think that's just to go back to our early uh, thing is like, I'm listening to the focus groups. They're ready to move on from Trump. Like, yeah, they're talking about DeSantis, but their relationship with DeSantis is shallow. The election deniers all lost. So people are kind of groping around the parties infighting the MAGA versus the MAGA on MAGA violence within the party is really increasing. Um, and like it's fracturing and they don't have like a clear path forward. And so I'm just like, you know, all oh, their cracks you can open, you know, you could start pushing into them. Uh, and then that's not what people are Marjorie doing. Marjorie Taylor though. Green. Like that's what was so de- de- Marjorie Taylor yeah, no, Green I know. would be a, a good uh, possibility. Why not? To fill that. Um, okay. I want to go before we finish. Um, we had your JVL is going to do an awesome policing uh live stream tonight uh with radley belko who i've loved forever um so everybody should tune into that uh we'll make we, we don't it's been a good show and a long show we don't want to go too long for, for J, poor jvl with his covid since he's got to perform again later um but i had i did an interview with brooke jenkins in um uh, uh san francisco who's this more of this law and order da that's out that's out right now um which kind of comes at an interesting time right after all these you know cops like murdered the murder Tyree Nichols. Um, so I'm just I, I I'm I just wanted to kind of put a quarter in the machine on both of you. Um, uh, JVL, you're going to be I think representing the cuck abolish the all cops are bad lane tonight. But like what you know where do you think all of this kind of shakes out? Like is do, do you think that there is that the Brooke Jenkins thing is just not tenable because of these these Tyree Nichols situations come up? Like like a, some person like that can't emerge in the Democratic Party or do you think that that is this a political this... question or a policy question? Because well, the policy question is like, how do we fix how do we fix the criminal justice system? The answer is it's not tenable. Unfixable. You can't okay, fix so it. then it's a political uh, question. There are too many different problems, and they're all localized. Like, there's no you know, like you can't reform criminal justice because everything is done at the state or the local level, and you know, you got like eighty five thousand different. Uh, law enforcement organizations and they all have their own cultures and histories and problems and then you know it goes all the way up to the judges and then all the way down to like medical examiners and it's just it's tough politically I think 
that the Brooke Jenkins, that is the the way for Democrats to go, which is the Biden. It's like we need more cops. We need to pay them better. They need to they need to be more professional and we need to spend more time on spend more resources on training and have them be better. I think that's the obvious winner. I think, and you you wrote the piece on this, right? We need more cops. We need fewer guns. And the reason we need fewer guns is because we got to make sure these cops don't feel like uh, every time they pull somebody over for a traffic stop, they're going to get gunned down by somebody with an AR-15. Uh, and you you make that two prong pitch, and you let the let Republicans freak out about it, even though both of them are both of them are reasonably yeah. popular positions. I do just wonder if that's even tenable in the Democratic Party. And the problem is you have these two highly emotional, visceral issues, right? You have the death of this these young black men, and particularly Tiger Eccles, which is a fucking maddening, and you just want to scream at the cops and 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 then you know you have in my video, Sarah, and like these th- these videos, I I I. I I'm one of the people that's walking down SF and like with my head down with my music on, not like paying that close of attention to what's happening on the street. So it was even for me to kind of go over there taping the video. I don't know if you had a chance to watch it yet. It just went up. But like there's this guy like trying to get a get a vein, putting a needle in his vein for like three minutes, like outside the Whole Foods right in downtown San Francisco. Right. So I, that's also extremely visceral, you know, something that 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 draws at people. And I just. You know, I don't know. I think that within the this is an easy thing for Republicans just be like, ah, eh, fuck it. You know, uh, I'll, you know, back the blue, et cetera. Like, what do you how, how do the, how do the Democrats kind of navigate that to those two issues? Do you think, Sarah, is it navigable? Politically? Yeah, I mean, I coalition? think that, uh, uh, yeah, because I think the the bigger part of their coalition wants them to do something about this. I think you've seen that in some of the referendum on some of these elected officials. Uh, you know, D.C. is a is a also a pretty liberal place. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you guys saw that there there. You guys aren't in D.C., but there is a um, tent encampment uh, a few blocks from the White House. Um, there has been a ton of violence, a ton of drug use. Um, it's chased out all the businesses like right downtown. Um, and I walk by there. It's super scary. Um People are naked and and it's like this and it's also but it's also like it's incredibly sad. And but I feel like there is a um, like it's just like with so many of the that are the difficult issues to grapple with, like Democrats should have a position of we are going to tackle this. We're just going to do it with humanity and compassion and like a sense of that these are human beings, uh, in, in, which is not what Republicans do. And, and, and look, there's obviously like a million like sort of sidelong policies to that in terms of how you approach homelessness. Um, how you approach like the lasting impact of the pandemic, uh, how you approach the fact that there aren't houses being built in a lot of these cities. Um, and so, you know, I think Democrats have to talk about what their solutions are. They can't just ignore it. This is, I think what's frustrating is um, people get frustrated feeling like Democrats are just ignoring things. And then they start to reach for Republicans because at least Republicans are talking about it. Yeah. I Tim, can I ask you, so I, yeah. I watched the the, so I watched the video. I have not read your piece yet. I started the piece. Uh, did you kind of, I kind of fell for Brooke Jenkins over the course of your like five minute thing with her. And I couldn't tell if you were like kind of as in love with her as I was feeling or if you were trying to push back against her. A little what did bit you, of both. Give me the director's cut. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I you. really liked her. I mean, she's, it's, it's kind of crazy. You're getting to this age now. Like we're peers, like she's like a year older than me, right. Or the same age, you know? So like, we're like graduated this high school the same year. She's got, we've got kids that are the same age and she's trying, like, I, I, we would definitely be friends. I was really disappointed. We couldn't go get a beer. Our plan was to do this over beers, but like being the prosecutor in D- in San Francisco is, uh, kind of a high security job now. <laughs> and so they were calling me and they're like, oh, we're gonna have to sweep the bar and send. And so I was just like, okay, fuck it. That's not worth, not worth the problem. But um, but she was someone that you would want to have a beer with. And um, I was interested, remember in LA, when I was asking Favreau, I was like, this is frustrating that California has all these problems and none of these California politicians like seem to like want to deal with any of them, right? It's all like, oh, Republicans bad, like progressive stuff, great, like clap, clap. None of them are like, oh, we should maybe review some of these things that are leading some of these. So I, I thought that was really cool. She is just no bullshit on all that. And she did not like Chesa. And she was lecturing the white libs who want to tell black communities what they want with their anti-racism and and with kind of an edge. And I, I thought, I was like, that's pretty bold. I, you know, well, I don't know politically how viable that is within the Democratic Party. I think it might be, but I, you don't know. But I, uh, I thought she was 
she was great. I was super charmed. She w- didn't take the bait at all. I kept trying to do the higher political office thing, and she would not even she would not even give me an inch, um, which is probably right. She's got a very big, important job that she needs to maybe try to make San Francisco like mod- uh, modestly less of an open air drug market before maybe thinking about run- doing something else. But um, uh, but I thought it was great. I thought it was, it was cool that she did it. Um, okay. Honestly, I, I, my vibe with her was that she could, we could plop her in the, a fourth box on this show, and she would totally fit in and like be one of us. <laughs> I was gonna, say, I thought you were gonna say we could plop her into like a, the Senate, um, but yeah, that too. Um, we could plop Sarah into the Senate. Yeah. Okay, she might this, have higher aspirations than sitting than on the podcast with us. With us. Um, as great as it's been, a great show, a long show. Um, I'm gonna go see Carl Rove. Any tips for me before we go? Um, probably, probably, probably be Turd less charming Blossom. than Brooke Jenkins. Yeah. Me and Carl discussing uh, the future of the Republican Party. Okay, we'll just see how it goes. We'll just do it live. I mean, he's another one. I mean, he. this is part of the discussion, right? He's another one who he's been critical of Trump. Yeah. Right. He like he's he's an outsider, but he's been mostly clear about. how. And so. But like, would he like if Donald Trump's the nominee? Uh, oh, yeah. What, would he support him? You know, I, I would be interested. I would be interested to know what Democrat he would most fear as a 2024 nominee. Okay. I don't know if he'll answer you honestly because yeah. Rove is not I'm, famous for. Yeah, I'm be asking that giving stage. like unvarnished opinions. Yeah, but uh, um, yeah. Okay. Well, wish me luck. We well, will see I don't. You oh, go ahead. No, yeah. I was about to close this down. No, you had no, one more good thought. Good luck. I, I was like... just. I was just going to say, just because uh, I was. It was choppy on the top half of the show. The I want to be clear uh, that I do not. I think that where Larry Hogan is is wrong. Like he's going to have to figure out how to have a much clearer anti-Trump stance if he wants to do anything uh, in the Republican primary. Two words. Say them. They're magical. They'll work for them. Um, and, uh, you know. We'll do this all again next week, hopefully on Wednesday. Maybe I won't, you know, double schedule myself, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, catch y'all next time. I don't remember what JVL's usual sign off is. So, peace and hair grease. Bye.